Come on. What an absolute beautiful time this morning of celebrating with those people who have made a decision to follow Jesus. You know, there's no greater miracle than to see lives being changed, life being saved, people being delivered from what they once struggled with, and now they're alive in Christ and they're choosing to follow Jesus. I mean, that is the greatest thing that we could possibly ever witness. Anybody else fired up about that? Man, I want to see more of that. Man, next time we have baptism, I want to see double. Like we had uh, seven or eight people this morning. I believe we're going to see 16. I believe we're going to see 20. I believe we're going to see 30. I believe there's going to be even much more than that. Amen? Um, if we haven't met before, maybe you're new today. My name is Adam, and I'm the pastor. What a privilege it is to have you here today. We are uh, currently in a series we're calling Activate. And what we want to do is we want to discover and boldly walk. It's the key part in love in our spiritual gifts, in love with our spiritual gifts. We went through a series last year on the fruits of the Spirit, and we've said this, that we have no business walking in our spiritual gifts, the, 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 gifts, the manifest gifts, without walking in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, without the fruit of the Spirit, right? And so we strategically went through the fruit of the Spirit last year in preparation for this series so that when we walk in these gifts that God, I believe, is activating in his people, we will do so with love. Because what are we if, we if we don't do it with love? We're just but a clanging cymbal. We're just making noise. And so what do we want to do? We want to walk in these gifts that the Lord gives his people with love, with love towards others and love towards him. Uh, last week... Wasn't last week just absolutely incredible? If you didn't leave here saying, man, the Lord was in that place, there was, you're dead. There's something wrong with you. The Lord just showed up in an incredible way, and his presence just filled this room, and there was just something different about it. And what I believe is that, man, uh, we're going to see more times like that. I believe even this morning, there was a time in his presence. Like it was, if you can't sense God in this place, uh, there, there's something with you and you need to wake up a little bit. Uh, but what I believe is, man, the Lord is going to continue to move in these ways. And I just want to preface it by saying this. It's not just happening your journey, but it's happening everywhere across this country. I see it everywhere. It's happening in these colleges, Asbury, all around the world. It says in the last days that you will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. His sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will dream dreams. Old men will see visions. And we're just kind of come on the precipice. The beginning stage is what I believe is an, a, a, the beginning of an outpouring of revival in this nation. And it's not just here a journey, but we're just a part of it. And this is what I know, that I don't want to go anywhere that the Holy Spirit's not taking us to go. Also, I'm a human being. And at times, as we're stewarding this revival, because not only are we stewarding the revival, we're stewarding his presence, that there'll be times where we'll make mistakes. Sometimes we'll let it go too long. Sometimes we will, hopefully we don't uh, let it, not let it go long enough. But I just wanted to say this, that man, I just, I want to listen to the Holy Spirit. I want him to go where he wants to go. And man, just pray for your leaders Pray for the pastoral staff that we're able to steward what God is doing, that we are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what he is speaking and what he is saying, that we go only where he wants us to go. So I just, uh, man, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing and I anticipate, man, we're just in the beginning stages of an outpouring, uh, an awakening within our country, an awakening within this church, our city, in our region. And how many of you know, man, we need revival in our country we need a move of God in our country. And it starts what? It starts with a personal revival within us, yeah? Uh, just kind of lay some groundwork with where we're at right now in this series. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about tongues and interpretation of tongues. And that gift, and some of you right now are like, oh, I don't know about that. I'm a little scared, a little hesitant. Don't be. We're going to kind of lay some groundwork with it. Some of you are like, yeah, let's go. This is going to be awesome, right? Uh, I just believe that like next week, 
the Lord's going to teach us, we're going to share also how we're going to operate in these spiritual gifts within our church family so we're able to do and walk in these spiritual gifts in what? In decency and order. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 14 talks about. We're going to walk in these gifts in decency and order because what it will allow us to do is that we won't get in the way of what the Holy Spirit's doing and we won't, we won't uh, operate out of our flesh. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of lay some groundwork for it. Then the following week, we're going to go through uh, the last and final gift of this series on discerning of spirits and our founding pastor is going to bring that word and so you don't want to miss that. Is it, we're living in a day and age where discerning of the spirit of whether it's the Holy Spirit or another spirit is incredibly important. And so you want to stick around for the remainder of this series. But I will say all that because uh, this next series, the Lord has just laid it on my heart and I almost, I'll be honest with you, scratched this series and just went straight to it. But we're going to go through a series called Jesus Stories. We're going to be looking at the life of Jesus and the miracles of Jesus, the central figure in all of the Bible to see how he walked and how he moved. And this is what I know about the life of Jesus. And this is kind of a bold statement, but Jesus is perfect theology. The way he walked this earth is perfect theology. So we're going to be looking at his life and we're going to take what he did just as he took it to the streets and we're going to take what God is doing in this place and we're going to take it to the streets. Amen? Amen. And so it's a, going to be a powerful series. It's going to be a series where I believe the Lord is going to do something special to begin to look at his life. But uh, let's read our text for today, the text for this series. We find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Let's read this together. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. We don't want to be ignorant, do we? You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. That's what we're talking about today to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So what I want to do today is I want to look at the gift of prophecy. And before we dive into this gift, uh, let's pray and then I want to kind of lay some groundwork with uh, this series that we haven't talked about yet with all of these nine gifts that pertains to all of it before we walk into it. Let's pray right now. Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place to speak and to have your way with us. Lord, we know that you are here and we welcome you here. We welcome you in this place. Lord, I pray that today, oh God, that Lord, you would make this Logos word, your written word. May you make it rhema to us, God. May you make it alive in our hearts. May it not just be words, God, but may, Lord, you speak to your servants, Jesus. For, Lord, we come humbly today, God. We know that, God, we don't have everything figured out, God. But, Lord, your ways are higher, your thoughts are greater. And, Lord, we simply just want to submit to you today and ask for you, Father, to speak to us for your servants are listening. Speak, Holy Spirit. Lord, may we receive everything, God, and nothing less of what you have for us today. We've come before you this morning, Jesus. We love you so much. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Uh, Caleb, my son, and Ruth, my daughter, they both have their own individual Nintendo Switches. Now, if you were to ask him the question, Caleb Ruth, do you have a Nintendo Switch? They would answer this question. They would say, yes, I have a Nintendo Switch. But if we were to get technical about this, they don't have the Nintendo Switch. I bought the Nintendo Switch. And so therefore, I have the Nintendo Switch 
two of them, but I give them access to this Nintendo Switch. Now think about it. I don't allow them to play this Nintendo Switch at any time they want to play. The only time they get to play it is on the weekends at certain hours, at certain times. They have limits on it. So therefore, it is not their Nintendo Switch. It is their dad's Nintendo Switch. And because of their relationship with me, I give them access to this Nintendo Switch. Listen, we don't have the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit possesses the gifts, and he gives us access to these gifts. We have full and complete access to the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he possesses, but because we are bought by the blood of Jesus, because we are sons and daughters of God, we have access to these gifts. At any point, he can speak to us. Because you can't operate in these gifts on demand, can you? It's only simply when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, you tune into the frequency of what the Holy Spirit is speaking, of what he is saying, and then you are able to prophesy. You are able then to have a word of knowledge. You are able then to have a word of wisdom. You're able to walk in these nine gifts because of the Holy Spirit that came and lived inside of you when you gave your heart to Jesus. You have access to these gifts at any point point in time. You see, our relationship with the Holy Spirit is way more important than what you really thought that it was. You see, he is the overflow. He is the fountain. He is the, he is the one that allows you to have a word of knowledge. It wasn't you. It wasn't you who thought of that clever idea. It was the Holy Spirit living inside of you. It wasn't you as the word of wisdom. It wasn't you who was able to discern that spirit that was attacking you and it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was, it was a demonic spirit coming against you. What is that? Is the Holy Spirit revealing that to you? You have access. Say, I have access to the nine gifts. Come on, say, I have access to the nine gifts. You have access to the nine gifts. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives you the gifts. Now, there are four categories of gifts that scholars have kind of broken apart in Scripture. What I want to challenge you to do is this next week, I want you to take notes on, on, on this next section, whether it's in your, uh, through the app or uh, in your notes on your iPhone or by just simply writing it down. I want you to study these this week, all right? So I want to give you the four categories of gift that we find in Scripture. Here's the first category. It is the motivational gifts. The motivational gifts. This is found in Romans chapter 12. The motivational gifts found in Romans chapter 12. Again, we don't have time to go through all of them, but I want you to go out and I want you to study them this week. The second category of gifts is the manifestation gifts. This is what we've been talking about, the spiritual gifts, which is found here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which we just read. The next category of gifts is the ministry gifts found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 the ministry gifts. And then there are ministerial gifts found in Ephesians chapter 4. This is, these are the gifts of Jesus. This is the pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and apostle. So go take those four categories in your own time this week, and I encourage you, go study the Word of God and look at these different gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. So these are gifts that we get as a benefit. It is a benefit of believing in who? In Jesus. Of being a son and daughter of God. Of him being our father. My question to you this morning is this, church. How many gifts have you left unopened? As you're studying this week, these four different categories, how many of these gifts have you left unopened? You know, maybe you've taken the bow off and you shook the present, you shook the gift a little bit, like, I don't know about that, that sounds a little funky, a little weird, I don't want anything to do with that. Or maybe you've tore the wrapping paper open a little bit and you're like, ah, oh, this is a little bit different, or whatever it might be, I want to challenge you. What gifts have you left unopened? And God's just saying, hey, open the gift up already. Be excited about this gift. 
It's not anything to be scared of. Maybe it's because of someone weird has taught on the spiritual gifts or the, or the gifts. You know, I'm a little bit weird. It's okay, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm weird as well. You know, we're all a little bit weird, right? Or maybe it's because you've seen them abuse and you've seen a spiritual gift hurt you in the past. I just want to encourage you, man, break down those walls and just ask the Lord, Lord, I want everything that you have for me and nothing less. Would you do that? Open the gifts, church. So what are these gifts for, though? 2 Corinthians 12, 7. It says this, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of whom? All. Say it again. The profit for who? All. all. It's for the profit of all. Because you are part of the body of Christ. Your hands, your feet, your part, your eyes, you're a part of the body of Christ, and it's for the profit of all. Now, something I want you to know, within these spiritual nine gifts or these gifts of manifestation, these manifestation gifts, there are also nine different categories for these gifts. This is how scholars kind of break it down. It helps you kind of learn these things and to understand them. This is how scholars break it down. The first category is this. The first category is vocal gifts. Of these nine spiritual gifts, there's the vocal gifts. Why? Because they can't operate without vocal cords. What are these? Different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. The next category is the power gifts. Why are they called the power gifts? Because they get things done. They grab people's attention. These are the power gifts. What are they? Faith, gifts of healing, and working of miracles. The next category of gifts of these nine spiritual gifts, gifts of manifestation, are the revelation gifts. Why are they called the revelation gifts? Because these gifts could not be received by any other way but by fresh revelation from the Holy Spirit. What are these? The three of them are a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Now something for you to know with this is just because you operate in these gifts does not always mean that you have the character to back them up. Just because someone operates in these gifts does not mean they have the character to back them up. And so as a word of warning, if you begin to operate in these gifts, you can very easily call someone else's faith to be hindered because you're operating in the gift, but then your character is not backed up by it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the cause of someone else's faith to stumble because I've operated in a gift, but then I go off and I do whatever I want to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm living a life of sin, and a life that is not holy, that a life that is not set apart, but I'm still operating in the gift. It seems as though... That character should fall in line with them, but it, it doesn't all, always. So also a word of warning. If you see someone operating this gift, and then they go and they do something, you're like, I don't know about that. That's really, that, that, that's sinful. They're, they're living in the world. They're doing something else. Don't allow that to cause your faith in Jesus to be hindered because they went off and they did something. Do you understand that? Like, this is important for you to understand. If you see someone operating the gifts, and then you see them, them go off and they're doing something that is, that is unholy, that is not, uh, does not line, line up with the character of God, don't allow that situation to dictate your faith in the Lord or your walk with him. It's incredibly important. There's a responsibility that we have if we're walking these gifts to walk holy, to walk set apart, to walk only with our eyes fixed on Jesus, church. Because if we begin to operate in these gifts and, we're our, and our character's not in line, it's dangerous. Let's be people who are set apart, people who are holy. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and be used by the gift, but do it in love. How do we do it in love? We just surrender completely our whole entire lives to him. Let me show you this. Watch this. This is what Paul wrote in Ephesians 4.11. And he himself gave some to be apostles... Some to be prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers.
teachers. Say some. So Paul, through the Holy Spirit, also wrote this. Now, does he, could, does he contradict himself? Does the Bible ever contradict itself? No, it does not. Watch this, 1 Corinthians 14, 31. For you can all prophesy. Say all. all. You can all prophesy one by one that all, say all, all, all may learn and all may be encouraged. So all believers may exercise the spiritual gift of prophecy. Yet God never says we will all be prophets. Prophesying in of itself does not give you the ministry of a prophet, nor the character that necessarily corresponds with that spiritual gift. But if you operate in this gift, you have increased responsibility. Let me give you a few things on this gift of prophecy. If all can prophesy, what do we need to know? Number one this morning, prophecy has to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. So few people ever begin with prophesying with 100% accuracy. Watch this, Romans 12, 6. Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. We are to do as much as we have faith for and then stop there. We are to do as much as we have faith for and then stop there. If we begin to operate in the gift, we will then grow and mature in it. But if we never begin, we will never mature. Some people will not do something if they don't operate in it perfectly from the get-go. And what ends up happening is they probably will never operate in it at all. Isn't it anything in life that we do? Doesn't it take practice? Doesn't it take work? Doesn't it take preparation to do it? So my son, Caleb, a couple weeks back, uh, he told me, so he's playing on the, on the um, football team at his, at his school at Pinewood where he goes, and uh, he's a wide receiver right now. And he goes, Dad, uh, I'm a wide receiver, but I think next year I really want to be the quarterback of the football team. Now, his kid's only in fourth grade. They're playing flag football, right? I'm like, dude, that's incredible. If that's something you want to aspire to be, that is amazing, but you got to know that, Caleb, if you're going to be the quarterback of the football team next year, you've got to go and you've got to practice. You can't just expect to and try hard and to walk into it. There's a difference between training and trying. You've got you to practice, son. So what are you going to do to practice? He goes, ah, I haven't really thought about that, Dad. I'm going to, and the next thing I know is I go outside and he has this, uh, this uh, circle thing hung up in a tree and he's been out there throwing the football against this target, practicing his throws, practicing being a quarterback because he realizes that he can't just try, that he has to prepare, he has to work at it, and he's not going to get it perfect right from the get-go. The same thing with, with, uh, with a business. If you have a business idea that you want to start, that you want to start, you wanna, you wanna get going, you can't just uh, wait till everything is perfect and everything is, uh, all, the, uh, all the T's are dotted, all the, uh, um, all, the, all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted. You can't just wait for everything to be lined out perfectly to start the business. What do you got to do? Sometimes you got to just take a step forward and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the business and, and improve it along the way and get, and get better at it. It takes work, right? It's the same thing with these spiritual gifts. We got to know that it takes a little bit of stepping out, sometimes a little bit messy at the beginning, but you got to realize this, that if you walk in humility, if you walk understanding that you're not going to get perfect all the time, then the Lord will allow you to grow, allow you to be able to tune into the frequency of heaven and what he is speaking and what he is saying, and you're going to get better and better and better at it. So this is, I've said this before, I want to say it again because I think it's important. So for me, when I feel like I have a word from the Lord for someone, I go up to them and I just say, hey, um, I just want to submit this to you. I feel like God is speaking this. And I say that humbly because I know that I could be wrong, right? Because sometimes there's a level of the flesh operating in that. And I just say, I just want to submit this to you. It could be God. And I just kind of submit it to them. Sometimes I don't even tell them I have a word for them. I just begin to encourage them. 
I encourage them to begin to walk in whatever I feel like the Lord is speaking to them. I don't even say, I feel like I have a word from you. And here's the thing too, y'all. This prophecy and these, these gifts of the Spirit should be normal. They should be normal. This is not, you don't have to scream, you don't have to make it some awkward spiritual thing. It's been operating in since Acts chapter 2, and it should just be a normal every part, uh, 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 every part of, the, of the life of the believer, right? And so all you got to do is to say, hey, I feel like God's speaking this, and I want to submit this to you. But what is prophecy, really? All it is is encouraging someone. That's all we're doing is we're encouraging another believer. So point number two this morning, prophecy brings encouragement. Prophecy brings encouragement. Back to 1 Corinthians 14, 31. For you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be what? Come on, a little louder now. Encouraged. So the Holy Spirit is the comforter. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. This Greek word is this word parakletos. That he may abide with you forever. John 14, 20. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So the Greek word for the Holy Spirit here is this word parakletos. Parakletos means this, one called and coming alongside you as comforter and counselor. He is your comforter and he is your counselor. The Holy Spirit's purpose is to encourage, stir up, cheer up, help you, and counsel you. How many just want that in your life? Someone to encourage you, help you, comfort you, and counsel you? I mean, come on, that's what we want in our life. The Holy Spirit, is that's what he's there to do. Now, this is most literally translated in English as advocate, which is from a Latin word meaning one called in. So the Holy Spirit is called in and sent by God to help you. He comes to justify you on the basis of your redemption in Christ. It is, he is not there to condemn you. He is not there to cast stones at you. He is sent by Jesus and he comes on our behalf. Therefore, do not accept condemnation or discouragement. Anything that causes you to feel fearful, anything that causes you to feel unworthy, church, is not the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was uh, 15... 16 years old, I just remember getting uh, so many different prophetic words in my life of, that I would go into ministry one day. And along the way, you know, there were moments of discouragement. There was moments when I felt like, you know, I don't know about all that. I knew that I was personally called into full-time vocational ministry. We're all called into ministry no matter where you're at, Right? You're called into ministry, but I knew I was called into vocational ministry, and, um, but there was times of just discouragement along the way. But I would go back to those words when I became discouraged and remember those words that were spoken over me prophetically by people in my life that I trusted. And in those moments, I was able to remember them and I was able to walk through those valleys because of that word that encouraged me to keep going. They encouraged me just to keep going after the Lord. They encouraged me to pursue it. Which leads me to the next point this morning. Point number three, prophecy gives a word in season. That when you're weary, you're going through a difficult time, prophecy is strategic. The Holy Spirit will use it in moments of weariness and moments of discouragement to give you a word to encourage you. Proverbs 15, 23. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And I love this, a word spoken in due season. How good is it? A word spoken in due season at just the right time. Proverbs says, how good is it? You see, being able to speak a word in season to someone who is weary at just the right time, it makes all the difference in the world. Why wouldn't we want to be a part of that as believers? 
Why wouldn't we want to operate in these gifts and tune our hearts to the Holy Spirit and allow him to operate in this through us so we can encourage one another, so we can lift one another up, so we can encourage one another to walk through those valleys, to walk through those hard situations. A word spoken in due season, how good is it? You know, I know many people who are a little bit on the negative side. You know those people? They're glass half empty people. It just feels like they're always negative no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on. But that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to encourage you. The Holy Spirit is there not to cause, to to cast doubt on you or condemnation towards you. He is there only to encourage you. And so if you receive a word and it doesn't lift your spirit up and you feel fearful, you feel discouraged, reject it. It's not the Holy Spirit. Just reject it. We said this before. You can reject a word, of, a word that someone gives you or you can accept it. You can reject it or you can accept it. If it makes you feel fearful, if it makes you feel discouraged, just reject it. Here's the thing about it too. As the Lord speaks to his people and we begin to walk in this as a church body and do so with love, all we're simply doing is just seeing people as God sees them. All you're doing is seeing them the way Jesus sees them. You see, Jesus, God, he has so much purpose and destiny in you. And as we give a word to someone, all we're doing is calling out that great purpose and that great destiny in each and every person. All we're doing is we're seeing them the way Jesus sees them. You see, this is not weird This is not something out there because we can all agree the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and all we're doing is allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us about the way he sees them, to give them a word of encouragement. May we see people the way God sees them. May we encourage people to walk in their destiny and to walk in their purpose. You have to know, church, you have a destiny You have a purpose. God has called you. He has set you apart. And the enemy will try to do everything he possibly can to whisper in your ear that you're not good enough, that you don't have it all together. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is with you and greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. And you can overcome every attack of the enemy. You can overcome that assignment that the enemy has uh, set against you because the Holy Spirit is with you. And there's nothing like a prophetic word to encourage you, to lift you up in those seasons. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. And I believe that we're going to be a church who individually begins to walk out our purpose and our destiny because as we begin to do that, we complete the body of Christ. What is it for? It's for the profit of all. It's to build everyone up, to encourage one another. I don't know about you, but man, I want to walk in tune with the frequency of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me so I can just encourage And I can lift those who I love up. Amen? Would you rise with me? Church, I'm going to say it again. Let me encourage you. Every single person in this room, they have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. Specifically, that God has spoken over you. Don't be distracted. Don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you. Don't be fearful. Don't back down. Go after the Lord with everything that you have, with everything that you are, and walk in your destiny. And all we're doing here as a church community is we're simply just encouraging one another. It's not weird. It's not out there. We're just bringing encouragement to one another.
So would you just do something with me? Would you just close your eyes? Would you just put your arms?